guys, welcome to Sujata Ayer Talk Show, and we are here with another episode with our respectful guest who believes in positive psychology and ensures that people deliver all class performance and feel happy about themselves. It gives me immense pleasure to have Dr. Ashish Ambasta, who talks around dealing with stress through science of happiness. So your company is also Happiness Plus. So I want to know uh, what, according to you, is happiness. Okay, this is a tough one. Okay, uh, the more you try to understand, uh, the more it becomes fuzzier. I think uh, you know happiness. Definition of happiness varies with the person who is defining it. Okay, for me, it's like uh, having an overall satisfaction with what you have in life. Uh, always trying to improve it for the better. and in the journey try to impact as many as people possible right so i guess from my perspective it's it's a, it's a life which has got meaning and purpose and you get to do something what you love doing so right. for me that will be something which i will say happiness is right so short and simple because the more we complicate it with materialistic things and uh, things around we bound our uh, boundaries with things like i want this i want this and that is happiness maybe a price tag in the particular ba- handbag that i purchased is happiness <laughs> so all these things uh, limit ourselves when we see happiness too which is a perfect point sir so i will say uh, there are two types of happiness which we see one is what is called the happiness of mind and then happiness of heart okay uh, happiness of mind is something to do with the way you regulate your thought processes yeah. uh, the way you think about yourself and others i think that makes a lot of difference like uh, something to do with uh, gratitude or right. being mindful about your presence uh, it's also about uh, having a concept of forgiveness and uh, remembrance uh when you are about talking about hope and optimism these are all thoughts around your mind right. and if you uh if you are someone who purposely do something in your life to nurture these thoughts uh then you will get what i call happiness of mind happiness of heart is more about uh having the right type of relationships with people doing what you want to do what you love doing and uh, living with compassion and love and having empathy so i think that is what i will call uh, happiness of heart but apart from that the third happiness is happiness of senses where you talk about uh, you know wearing the best and most expensive clothes uh, you can want to be in the best possible address in the world uh, you want to drive the biggest car uh, you want to achieve anything which it should please your senses right so unfortunately a lot of us consider the happiness of senses to be the ultimate goal of their life and that's why uh, we keep chasing materialistic things and we keep reminding ourselves that our values and uh, our uh, respect in the eyes of somebody else has improved okay but in reality nobody is actually uh, got impacted by your achievements uh, because it doesn't matter to them so right. the things which i am doing and i always try to do to let people understand that there are different sources of happiness and i'm not saying that uh, you should not please your senses absolutely you should you are a human being and obviously we are struggling to do so much in our life to uh be in a position where we are comfortable right so you can do that but don't forget the happiness of mind and happiness of heart heart which are as impactful and powerful as i will i will say they are much better than uh the happiness of senses so right. that will be my expectation and the segregation is like really very thoughtful and yeah it does help to when you see it this way then it makes a lot more simpler <laughs> absolutely i think uh, one of the things which i you know always ask anybody who might meet is and also do this experiment continuously it's an experiment which is called the genie experiment so in the genie experiment i say suppose you have a genie in front of you and the genie asks you to ask anything you want to ask 
most probably people ask for money, power, health, you know, time, and don't want to age, and everything they ask, except for happiness. Right. But when you remind them that, you know, do you, don't you want happiness? Because if you get a lot of money and you're still very unhappy, will it make sense? Then they say, yeah, yeah I think you're right. So I, I will ask for happiness. So what it shows that happiness is important for all of us, we don't prioritize it. Right. And the reason why we don't prioritize it, because we can't see happiness. We can't, uh, you know, we can't touch happiness. We can't, you know, feel happiness just like that. So we always believe that unless until you have something or you have done something, happiness will not come. Right. But, uh, you know, researchers like us know that, you know, you don't need anything to feel happy. Very you just feel happy. Very true. So, so uh, knowing that happiness is one form and the other form is stress. So can stress affect the mental health and also affect the performance at work? I will explain uh, this uh, in a very simple manner. What is stress? Stress is a reflection of your ambition and expectations. And, uh, you know, if you're very, very ambitious, obviously you will try to achieve things. And if, you know, in the process, sometimes you will win, sometimes you will not win. That creates a lot of stress. Okay, what is, again, what is stress and worry from my perspective? So I am someone who has a goal. And if I think a little negatively about that goal, whether I will achieve it or not, I will fall in worry and stress segment. But if I you know, have a thought process, which is on the positive side, mm -hmm. then it will turn into hope or optimism. So I'm not saying you should not have a goal. You should have a goal. Obviously, you, everybody wants to have a goal. But how you train your mind to think about it is right. where right. the entire difference comes in. If I am, hope, if I am positive, it is hope, hopefulness. If I am negative, it is a stress. And I think I always remember these words of somebody who has said that if it has to be, it will be. If it has not to be, it will not be. Right. So maybe by stressing up and worrying too much, I'm not sure that you're going to change the outcome. At best, you can increase your efforts and have a lot of intensity with which you are trying to achieve things. But yeah, I think that's the only thing which is under your control. Now, if you try to control the uncontrollables, you are going to face a lot of stress. And obviously, yeah. if, if you are stressed, if you are stressed, then there is a hormone which gets secreted in your body, which is cortisol. Now, right. once cortisol comes in your body or your system, it stops other happiness-inducing hormones, which is uh, dopamine, serotonin, yeah. oxytocin, endorphins. That one hormone ensures that none of these four flows. So obviously, when you are stressed, you will be very unhappy. And uh, if you're very unhappy, then obviously it will impact your performance. So I think that's how I look at it. That's again beautifully said and perfectly put up. Uh, sir, but then, you know, there are some things that are not uh, in our control. Say when we are anxious or we are stressed at that particular moment itself. When anxiety hits you, at that particular moment, or when you are stressed at, at that particular moment, what would you urge people to do? Again, I will say, I will take you a step back and I will say, when you fall sick, you go to a doctor and then I ask doctor which medicine you take. And the doctor will say, okay, take this medicine and that medicine. So you become sick, that's a minus one state. You go to a doctor, the doctor gives you a medicine, you come to zero, right? And the doctor also tells you that taking care of your health, if you had exercised, uh, if you would have taken good intake in terms of your food and your thought, you would not have fallen sick. Right. Similar thing is what we forget about our mental health. When we are stressed, then we look for solutions, exactly the way you asked me right now. So at that moment, what should be my solution? I will say that irrespective of your stress or worries or whatever you go through in life, you need to practice positivity. You need to practice happiness. And the way you build your physical muscles, you need to also build your mental muscles. Right. And uh, 
at Happy Plus, uh, what we always focus on telling our clients that uh, keep doing things of kindness, altruism, something which is uh, brings meaning and purpose to you. Uh, just surprise a stranger, okay, by an act of goodness. Uh, look for people who inspire you by their good act. Look for that piece of news which makes you say, wow, this is amazing. Now, if you consciously look for all these elements, the, the positivity muscle will build in. Okay, and it will also help you become resilient because you would have already seen people who have gone through difficult time in their life, but they would have come back very, very strongly. So when the tough time comes to you, you know that there are examples and I will also pass through it, right? Okay. So that way, an investment needs to be done in your physical or your mental health, the way you do your physical health. That's another thing that a lot of people also don't do investment in physical health and that's why they suffer. But imagine, uh, mental health, you are not even aware of it that you need to make an investment. And that's where there is a lot of anxiety, worry, and stress across the countries. Now, that was the additional answer. Now, coming to your question of when you are in stress, what you should do, I will just say that, uh, you know, close your eyes, meditate a bit, listen to good music, and just calm down. Because when you are in stress or anger or any emotion which are very negative and very empowering on you, you lose that part of your brain which allows you to think rationally. The prefrontal cortex stops working. And when prefrontal cortex stops working, then you are as good as any animal, right? So you don't have the power to think through. And when you don't have power to think through, you will do things randomly. And that's where you have to remind yourself that for you to take a step, you need to calm down, you need to relax your mind, and then go and deep dive in the problem that what exactly is stressing you and what is the maximum you will suffer if something which you're wanting to happen will not happen. And I think uh, when you start uh, talking about this, you know, when you start thinking about this, uh, you will realize that uh, you are you know, overly worried about something and you should calm down and uh, you, know, you should... Uh, you know, give it a time and try to do things differently. Obviously, it's easier said than done, but then normal steps of counting one to 100 very slowly should calm you down. And, and I think that's what I will suggest. Yeah. So when you are uh, like physically ill or when you are hurt in the, physical for, in the physical form, say you have a cut or you have a fracture that is seen, and then you know that you need to seek help. But when you are mentally ill, that is not seen. So how how can one know that they are not met or that they are not well mentally? I guess uh, if you are not mentally well, the indications will come to you for sure. Uh, it's people around you who might not know about what you are going through. But as a person, you will definitely feel that there is something wrong. And some of the indications will be that finding difficulty in sleeping your food pattern will change. You will be thinking uh, too much about a particular topic. You will be having what is called catastrophic thought processes. Okay, right. and uh, you will have far more negative uh, in, in, you know, inputs given to your, you by your mind, uh, which, will, which will be an indication that something is not right right now. Okay, yeah. and uh, if you're getting, uh, you know, anxiety bouts in terms of uh, uh, not sleeping properly, not eating properly, and you are avoiding people, you're not talking to people, uh, you know, also not socializing. These are the indicators that you are under tremendous stress and something needs to be done about it. And obviously people around you uh, should also take notice of the way you are going through or, or you know, on your day-to-day -day life. If I am not wanting to talk to people, they should come ahead and help you with this. Right. Right. And sir, uh, this is one more thing that is a little uh, different, that is addiction. So not maybe uh, related to alcohol or anything, but then uh, any so any form of addiction, maybe that, that also may cause into mental stress. And uh, say, for example, if I am on phone for a long time, that has caused me an addiction to be on the phone. Uh, uh, regularly eating carbs now what i understand is when 
people are more depressed or they are more sad they crave for carbs more so how how these are the uh, habits i don't think that uh, people would actually notice otherwise i think uh, what you're talking about is more of a coping mechanisms uh, yeah. where you don't know the direct answer of your stress and you want right. to be away from that stress by reminding your mind or letting your mind know that situation like that does not exist right. and that's where you get into addiction right. i will say uh, it's a shortcut to finding your solution and uh, it actually does provide you any solution in the long term because uh, when you are addicted then you are actually uh, trying to be in a world which does not exist okay and uh, you know instead of being in present and trying to solve an issue you are trying to take a refuse uh, yeah. you know through something which is not going to help you yeah it is uh, obviously uh, scientifically proven fact that people who are under stress uh, or having a lot of anxiety want to soothe themselves with different forms of addiction but i will always tell you that this is not the right way of uh, tackling your issue unless and until you talk about this to people around you whom you can confide in or decide yourself that you want to change the situation and uh, it requires a lot of will power for you to do that uh, and also right guidance so if you are uh, surrounded by people who are good good people who really take care of you they won't allow you to go and get addicted so i think in a in a way i these are also people who will not be socially connected and right. will not have a lot of people whom they can call their friends and that's why they you know fall into situations like this i will say uh, that the reminder you know the fact which you really need to remember is that there is no problem you cannot solve if you want to solve it right and the problem with a lot of people is that instead of trying to solve problems we want to avoid and find shortcuts and that's why it ruins our entire life right so uh, so one thing that i want to ask you is uh, what brought you into this particular domain as in happiness so you know psychology has got two aspects of it one is called clinical psychology the all the questions you were asking so far falls yeah. into clinical psychology where you know somebody is uh, under uh, you know depression anxiety and having challenges of mental stress and uh, you would talk to somebody who is an expert here and then bring that person from say minus 1 to 0 right i as a positive psychologist have to believe that that's one journey but another journey is from 0 to 1 people assume that if you are a normal person you are a happy person which is not the right thought process because the way you need to take effort from being negative to being normal similarly you need to also take a journey from being normal to happy so i personally am into that area uh, you know and i believe that happiness is something which is sought by everyone uh, and a uh, lot of people want everybody you ask anyone and you will hardly find somebody who will say i don't want to be happy right. so if everybody wants to be happy then what's the scientific way of feeling happy happy and what's the definition what exactly it means for me what should i do on a day to day basis so i think these are the questions which uh, we answer as positive psychologists and uh, i personally have spent a lot of time in hr consulting where i used to go to companies and uh, do these surveys to find whether people are engaged or not uh, in consulting domain there is uh, hardly anybody who uses the word happiness they will always go to companies and say uh, are your employees engaged instead of asking are your people happy right and i was in that business for 15 years and i somewhere realized that why it is uh, always engagement is cropping up why not people directly ask are you happy and uh, i didn't get any answer because a uh, lot of people were saying that engagement correlates with productivity and happiness may feel like you are having fun uh, you become lazy and uh, happiness also means that you don't have any aspiration so those were the words which were not being spoken about by consultants which i found very very surprising and when i did my phd in this area i realized that 
uh, while that's a good jargon to sell your products, but what ultimately everybody is looking at is happiness. Okay, right. and uh, I decided uh, in the peak of pandemic in um, April 2020 to quit my job and do something about it. Where uh, I wanted to make people aware that happiness as a subject can be understood. It's something which is backed with a lot of science and data. And uh, it actually helps you elevate your life and lead your life in a very, very good manner. And that's what is called thriving life. So I think uh, I was very lucky because I've been in this field for the last so many years and I could see, clearly see the difference where the, a lot of organizations were missing in terms of providing their support to employees. And when I came in, I said, uh, my proposition is very simple. And that's the area where I have also given my TED talk. Uh, the concept which I am propagating is if you have decided to be unhappy, nobody can make you happy. Right? Oh, very true. And very true. As an organization, we have taken a position that we are adults and our employees are kids. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's an adult child relationship, is what a lot of employers feel. My point of view is that uh, it should be an adult to adult relationship rather than an adult and child or a parent and child relationship. Because as an employee, I'm an adult, I know what is good and what is not good, good for me. So you cannot make me happy by just including my salary and uh, giving me designations and everything what I want. Because at the end of the day, I also don't know what I want as an employee. You ask what is the meaning and purpose, they won't know about it. So all the time, all the consulting firms were just doing what is 50% according to me. The 50% needed to come from employees. And that's where we came into picture and said that happiness is what should be managed by employees and engagement is what can be managed by organizations. And unless until these two marry, you will not have a complete solution. So I think that's where my genesis in this area has come into Many times I've seen that they uh, tend to neglect this one. And secondly, like you said, if you have decided to be unhappy, I have come across also a lot of people where I tell them this is not the approach you should be following. And uh, I always get in return that, no, I'm an overthinker. That they, and they proudly say that I'm, I'm an overthinker and this is going to be the, the way it is. Uh, maybe I see the more negative and that be, that is good for me because then something positive happens. So that is the way uh, their mind is feeded with. So that is, there is nothing wrong with it, I will say. Okay, uh, so there is a concept of set points. So there are people who are born with low set points in happiness. Mm -hmm. So whatever happens with them, they will be very, very unhappy, whatever it, it is. Even, uh, uh, you know, the best of the day of their life, they will be a little sober. Yeah. And there are people whose set points are really high, okay? So if you are taking a 1 to 100 uh, as scale, I will be at 80, right? right? Because I'm a very positive guy. So even the worst thing will happen to me, I will say, okay, fine. There is something good about it. Yeah, uh, that's the same and, with me. Uh, Yeah, so same will be with you. So what happens is that when you break it down, uh, when, when there is something negative which is happening with me, I will come from 80 to 60 or 55, but I will still be go to 80 after a few minutes or a few seconds, right? Exactly. But there are people who are in set points 30, even if they have won a lottery, they will go to 50 or 55 and then come back to 30. Right. So that's yeah. their build. This is fine. But that does not stop you from taking an effort from being a bit happier than what you were in previous day. Right. And for that, you need to take action rather than just saying, no, no, I'm just like that. I need to love being unhappy and nothing can happen with me. So I think uh, realization of this and that action can only be taken by the individual once he or she has acknowledged that this is where I feel my happiness at point is. And I think organizations need to support them. And uh, that's the point I'm trying to drive in a lot of companies. Right.